Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. We have the fourth root of 15 minus x plus the cube root of x plus 2 equals 3, and we're going to be solving for x values. Now, for many radical equations, the standard method is to isolate the radical and then raise both sides to a power so that we can get rid of the radicals. Here, that creates problems because we have the fourth root and the cube root and they're not the same, so this would not be a good method. So we're going to be using something non-standard, and that is called substitution. Even though substitution is very common, using it for these kinds of problems is not very standard. So now, I'm going to call this expression A, and I'm going to call the second part B. So that from here, I get a simple, simple equation, which is A plus B equals 3. Great. That looks simple, but it contains two variables. So we have to find another equation that will help us solve it as a system. Otherwise, we're going to get infinitely many solutions, but we know that there aren't infinitely many. Now, how do we get another equation? Well, let's go ahead and look at what we did. We said the cube root of x plus 2 is equal to that, and the fourth root of 15 minus x is equal to a. So let's go ahead and write it down. So I can write this as the fourth root of 15 minus x equals a. Let's raise both sides to the fourth power. 15 minus x equals a to the fourth. So that's what I get from a to the fourth. And then let's go ahead and do the same thing for the cube root. Cube root of x plus 2 is equal to b. If you cube both sides, you get x plus 2 is equal to b cubed. Now I would like to use this one and this one together. And what I can do is I can actually add those two equations. If we add them, we get the following. The x cancels out, we get 17 equals a to the fourth power plus b to the third power. So let me go ahead and write it down here, a to the fourth plus b to the third equals 17. Now this gives us a nice system of equations in two variables and we should be able to solve it. So let's go ahead and use substitution here since elimination is not possible. Let's go ahead and isolate b here. If we do, we get b equals 3 minus a. And then let's go ahead and substitute that in the second equation. And that gives us a to the fourth power plus the quantity 3 minus a to the third power equals 17. So this is the equation we're going to solve. It's again in a single variable, but it's a quartic equation as opposed to a radical equation. So it's a polynomial equation and we should be able to solve it. Let's go ahead and expand it. We get a to the fourth power plus. Now if you cube 3 minus a, as you know from the binomial theorem, a minus b to the power n, you can just write this as 27 minus 27a plus 9a squared minus a cubed equals 17. Let's go ahead and rearrange the terms, a to the fourth power minus a cubed plus 9a squared minus 27a, 27 minus 17 is equal to positive 10 and the whole thing is equal to zero. Great. Now, solving a quartic is not easy. There's a formula for quartic equations, but even the cubic formula is pretty complicated. So we can look for integer solutions. Are there any integer solutions? We have to find out. But the rational root theorem tells us that if there are rational solutions, then they have to divide 10. So we're basically looking at divisors of 10 here, and they're gonna be numbers like one, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 5, and plus minus 10. So you can go ahead and test all these out and then find which one is going to work. Maybe more than one will work. But after, you know, the examination of, of all these numbers by substitution and all that stuff, you're going to realize that a equals 2 is a solution. Now, why do I say that? Because I test it out for you. And if you plug in 2, you'll see the following. 2 to the 4th power minus 2 to the 3rd power plus 9 times 2 squared minus 27 times 2 plus 10. Let's go ahead and add the positives first. 16 plus 36 plus 10 minus 8 minus 54. This is 52, 62. This is 62 and that's minus 62 and the result is 0, which means that a equals 2 is a solution. So this equation has an integer solution and that is a equals 2. And knowing a equals 2 basically gives us the value of x. But let's go ahead and if, uh, find out if there's any other solutions. Now, how do you find that? You can basically divide this quartic polynomial by a minus 2. 
long division or synthetic division, or you can use the method that I'm pretty much uh, used in all my videos. I'm going to rearrange the term so that this expression is always divisible by a minus two. So I'm going to do the following. I'm going to start with a to the fourth, and I'd like to subtract 2a cubed because now notice that if I take out an a cubed, I'll get a minus 2 as a factor. And then I'll just keep arranging everything else. Then I do have a positive a cubed left over, but this requires that I subtract an 2a squared, but then I have to add 11a squared to make 9a squared. And then I'm supposed to subtract 22a squared, 22a, I'm sorry, that's supposed to be a degree lower. So 22a, and then to get 27a, I need to do minus 5a, and then I end up with 10. And notice that negative 5a plus 10 is also divisible by a minus 2 because it has to be that way. Now here, if you take out a cubed, you get a minus 2. And then if you take out a squared, you get a minus 2, which shouldn't be a surprise. 11a times a minus 2, and finally minus 5 times a minus 2 equals 0. So now we are able to factor this. a minus 2 obviously is a factor because a equals 2 is a solution. And the rest is going to be a cubic a cubed plus a squared plus 11a minus 5 equals 0. Now, we could repeat the same process here looking at rational solutions. But unfortunately, after, you know, checking plus minus 1 and plus minus 5, which are the only divisors of negative 5, you're going to find out that none of them work, which means this equation has no rational solutions. I'm, I'm talking about the cubic. Well, does it have any real solutions? Yes, it has to have, because if you have a cubic equation with real coefficients, then it has to have at least one real solution. So let's go ahead and find it. And how do you find it? Well, you can use the cubic formula again, Cardano's formula, or you can just use some technology, and that is called Wolfram Alpha. And here we go. We, as you can see here, this cubic equation, this cubic equation, which was given by a cubed plus a squared plus 11a minus 5 equals 0, has one real solution and two complex solutions. But notice that these are approximate values. If you do want to see the exact values, then this is what they look like. Okay, quite complicated, right? Well, you know, you can just solve it using uh, some computer-assisted system or Wolfram Alpha like this, and that's basically what you get. Okay, so those are the solutions that are not very obvious or trivial. Let's go back to what is trivial and find out the x value. Because remember, our goal was to find the x value, not the a value. But we know now that a is equal to 2. And going back to the original uh, problem, we said that let this equal a. Well, if a is equal to 2, then this expression should equal 2, which indicates that I can just now, why did I write 14? I have no idea. It's supposed to be a fourth root. If you raise both sides to the fourth power, you get 15 minus x equals 2 to the fourth power, which is 16. And from here, you get x equals negative 1. Now, what happens if you use b to solve for a? Or uh, it doesn't really matter because we didn't really find b. But if you know that a is equal to 2, this implies that b is equal to 1 because, remember, their sum was 3. And if you set the cube root of x plus 2, is equal to b, you would get cube root of x plus 2 equals 1, and from here x plus 2 equals 1, and x equals negative 1 again. So you'll get the same answer no matter what, doesn't really matter, that's why I just used a. So one of the solutions to this equation is x equals negative 1. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other equations. Okay, the other solutions. So let's see what we got from here. So we got this solution, which you can write as that, okay? But let's just stick with this one. So let's just call this a, um, well, we got one real solution. So from the cortic, let's call this a2. How about this? a sub 2 is given that. So if you remember, our the fourth root of 15 minus x is equal to a, but I called it a sub 2. If you raise both sides to the fourth power, it's going to be a2 to the fourth power. And from here, x is going to be 15 minus a2 to the fourth power. So that's going to be another real solution. And you can do the same thing with complex solutions. But remember, we got x equals negative 1. That was one of the solutions that is real. And this is another solution that you can find. Of course, I didn't plug in the a sub 2 because you can do it in decimal form. Or if you want to use the radical form, be my guest. And this brings us to the end of this video. 
Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.